Scales are everywhere in reality. In music, they bring analogies from nature and human imagination. A concept, a link between two ideas, or simply by being part of the melody. Chopin conferred to them a musical as well as a technical value. Learning scales allows everyone to work all fingers, to obtain precision, timing, speed and independence. Let's begin the construction of a scale by going back to a fundamental state in piano posture. The pianist is sitting and positioning correctly at the piano and has lifted the forearm without disturbing the reference position of the hand. The hand is placed on the target keys while the elbow hands free. The more fingers positioned and sensing their respective keys, the better. At this moment, if asked, the pianist should be able to describe what is happening and what is about to happen with the hand vis-à-vis -vis the keyboard. The scale construction begins by focusing on the immediate three fingers at play. Intense attention is paid to the finger that just played, to the finger playing now, and to the next finger in sequence. The muscles that initiate the movement are inside the hand, a notion that can be used during practice to develop proper mind-muscle connection. Each finger will eventually go from sensing to flexion, from flexion to support, and from support to release. Along the scale, the pianist will allow the fingers to lead the action. Any movement of the wrists, arms or body should be a consequence of this finger leading. A five-finger scale can be practiced in legato to staccato. From piano to forte. Also sensing from time to time the resting fingers on the keys. To avoid a learning conflict with the reference position of the hand, the first scales to learn should be writ in high notes, such as E major or B major. Starting the C major scale should be left to the end. Here, the flatness of the key landscape means that the long fingers have to work below their reference position. Most people have a problem with this arrangement of a C major scale because the fingers touch a narrower and heavier part of the key, frequently in between black keys. A compromise to this is curving the long fingers in order to stay on the safer part of the white key. Curving a finger, however, weakens the bone line of support, which is subsidized by the hyperactivity of long arm muscles. This tension produces resistance against the faster and more refined intrinsic muscles of the hand. A delicate challenge in scale technique comes when the hand runs out of fingers because a longer scale requires a lateral finger passing to continue. Finger passing is a chapter in itself. For ascending scales in the right hand or descending in the left, the thumb reaches and plays the target key usually after the third or fourth finger. The support of the previously played finger is essential to deliver the thumb in extension, easiness and precision. The support finger and the thumb make up flexible pins that hinges at the wrist, 
so that the combined action of the muscles helps bringing the thumb closer to the target key. As a consequence, a slight tilt of the wrist is expected towards the direction of the scale. The thumb in active passing uses its intrinsic muscles in the hand, articulating from the wrist, but controlling from its base. Thus, the tip of the thumb should remain free in case of need, while serving as a structural component as well as a sensing device. On the contrary, when the thumb is commanded to move from its phalanges, the playing down of the key becomes resisted and forced. The consequences are poor for the pianist and for the music. A thumb passing in a scale is in reality a double passing. The thumb crosses and plays, then the hand passes over. The later movement relies on the notion that the thumb articulation at the wrist has multiple roles. It bears weight. It maintains the height of the hand during the passing, and it does so while being articulated extensively. Yes, the action of the thumb in scales is complex and more athletic than the other fingers. When the thumb is correctly supporting the rest of the passing hand, the next finger in the scale is free to move and target the surface of the assigned key. This is a delicate action, one where the acting finger leads lateral movements of the whole hand to a state where the hand and the other fingers are positioned to continue the scale. Interestingly, this hand passing over the thumb is led by the corresponding finger muscles in the palm. In cases where the scale is going up in the left hand or down in the right hand, scale continuation uses both thumb and hand passings in reverse order. Led by the lateral movements of the next finger in the scale, the hand first passes over the supporting thumb. Once the passing finger plays the key and becomes support, the thumb can be extended out to reach its target key. Thumb extension in scales, arpeggios, or any other figure can also be commanded from the base of a finger. Therefore, avoid an extension from the tip. Just as in the case of a thumb flexing down the hand, extending the thumb from its base will eliminate antagonic tendon forces, granting freedom to the muscles involved in playing down the key.